Hi folks, John Cordisco back again with another great chess video for you. This is a remake of the live video, I call it, when I'm actually moving the pieces in person on the video with a computer screen. I like to do both. It's a game that I played in the first annual Broome County Championship located here in Binghamton, New York, or in upstate New York, uh, below Syracuse and just above the Pennsylvania border. When I went back to playing chess after about a 25-year absence, I looked for some U.S. Chess Federation rated games in the area like there was in the old Fisher Glory days, and there weren't any. So I started to do my own, and no one has done a county championship in like 40-odd years. So I decided to start one myself, and this is the first annual. I'm white. My opponent is Michael Kane. He's an interesting character. He's from western New York here upstate. Uh, he's got a lot of funny stories. He's an interesting guy. He's originally from Ireland. He is black. We're both just under 1600 rated. I have white. I went e4. Mike went e6. d4. b6. f3. Knight to c3. Black's a little behind in his development with the Fian Kettle. And in all fairness, it's going to be tough for him. I've got my two center pawns here, and both my knights develop, and he has this bishop. Bishop to d3. Whoop, excuse me. Knight to c3, bishop to b4. I played bishop. He played bishop takes. Now, according to the computer off screen, you can't see it. I'm almost three quarters of a pawn up. I, I call what they've. I'm up the minor exchange. In other words, I have a bishop for a knight, I have the bishop pair. H6, castle, D6, and I want bishop to B5 check. I'm really fairly comfortable at this point. I got a lot of development. I'm canceled. I got some center pawns. Things are looking pretty good. I could have considered rook to E1 and knight to D7. Felt more of his pieces. He went C6. He probably should have went knight to d7. I move my bishop back. I probably shouldn't have moved the bishop to check to begin with, since I've already moved the piece once in the opening, but I did it anyway. c5. Now, uh, what I should have probably done is gone d5. Open this up a little bit. Now, if he takes, I take. I moved bishop back and checked him. Probably not the smartest move in the world. He finally blocked with his bishop I took and knight takes. I still like my position a lot though. He can't take here. I retake the queen and the knight are guarding that square. I've got a really good center. I'm way ahead in development. He's not even close to being castled yet. I want rook d1. And he went e5. I give this a lot of thought. And I decided to go bishop to a3. Let's get the bishop developed. It's not the greatest square in the world, but I probably should have put my bishop here. He went queen to f6. Now prior to that, I was about a third of a pawn up. After that move, I'm over a pawn ahead. And you can see what's, what the problem is. This knight only has one square to go to now. That's not the most optimal square for that knight. So we're going to have to see how this works out. I went d5 just to block up the center. If you notice now, I don't have my light squared bishop anymore. So I can't have a quote-unquote bad bishop, as they say. Queen of d3 might have been interesting. And then he would have developed his knight. After d5, he went knight on c to e7. And for the life of me, I can't figure out why. Now this knight is completely trapped. He can't get out, period. And he sure as heck isn't going to castle on this side. So he's he's got some problems. Queen to d3, a6. You saw what I was going to do. I was going to try to infiltrate with my queen. It caused him some grief on the queen side. He went a6 to stop that. 
I want rook a to b1 to put it on the open file. Or I should say semi open file. It's my only semi open file. Knight to d2. I was getting some, I should say, delusions of uh, going knight here. Maybe later going knight here and then here. I, I wasn't really sure what I was thinking. That was part of my plan anyway. He finally moved his knight. He's wasted a ton of tempos trying to get his pieces developed. Knight to c4. In retrospect, I probably should have moved my bishop back to c1. Or maybe just move the bishop to b2. Knight to c4. He went bishop to b5. So now I've got to move my knight again. Knight to d2. And he finally castles. This is move 19. And he finally castles. Crack down on the high cost of breakfast at Sambo's. Nobody cooks a breakfast like Sambo's, especially for $1.29. $1.29? $1.29. An egg. Two strips of bacon. Six pancakes. All for $1.29? All for a dollar twenty-nine. Nobody cooks breakfast like Sambo's. A dollar twenty-nine. Hmm. Now at this point in the game, I should be way, way more on him than I am. He's wasted so many moves, and I fooled around with my bishop here. And you know, it's funny after you go over games, and you're wondering what you were thinking at the time. Maybe it's a good idea if. You're not really sure on what to do is to get up from the table if you have some time on your clock and just kind of wander around, check the other games, or maybe go outside and take a five-minute break and come back, clear your head a little bit. It was later at night, I remember. It was the last round of the day. I worked uh, the five days prior to this at my convenience store. I was pretty tired and did a lot of extra work so I could close that Saturday and Sunday. And you have to do all the media releases and all the little million little things you have to do to get a tournament going. You know, the press releases, you get the TV stations here, which they were. It was great. We had three TV stations and the newspaper. It was great to see chess in the news again after all these years. Anyway, I went C4. He pushes B pawn. He's getting a lot of space on the queen side. I finally moved my bishop back to C1. Finally gets his knight up to g6, knight to b3. Maybe I should have maybe moved my pawn here to stop his knight from coming in. In retrospect, hindsight's 2020, as they say. I still had some delusions of getting my knight into his position here somewhere. Being there's no bishop, that knight would be a real pain in the behind. Covering a lot of squares. He went a5. He's coming with his pawns. He went bishop e3. He went knight to h4. Now it's it's funny. As much as he was behind in development and how many moves he wasted, Black just made his 23rd move, and the computer shows it as dead even. 0.00. .00. I thought I had a better position than that, but apparently not. It's funny how you think sometimes you're losing or sometimes you're winning, and it's neither. Bishop to c1. a4. Here comes the pawns. Knight to d2. Where else would I put it? b6. Rook to b8 might have been interesting. It helps support that b pawn. Now, you can't see my computer, it's off screen, but it's calling me to play g3 again to kick that knight. What I did was I played knight to f1. I wanted to get some more pieces on the king side. I wanted to get my bishop back up here, here somewhere, or maybe here. Get my knight in here to help with the defense. My queen's right here. That's what was my thinking. Interesting scenario, though. After g3, queen to g5, queen to e3, knight to g6, queen takes, h takes. 
makes it about three quarters of an advantage for white. After knight to f1, he went knight to a3. That's a pretty strong pawn there in a3. And it's proven to be a pain in my behind. I allowed it to happen, frankly. So I got nobody to blame but myself. Instead of a3, they suggested again moving the rook to b8, but the other rook. And it kind of helped support the pawns that are getting pushed through. Now, my computer shows either c3 for white or rook to b3. Now, when I made this move, I went rook to b3. When I made that move, I thought it was a good move, and later I looked at it and didn't think so. So, obviously, it must be a decent move if the computer had it as a second suggestion. A person of my playing strength to pick out a move like that in a fairly complicated position on move 27. I'm pretty proud of that. He went queen to d8. I don't have the slightest idea why. I really and truly don't. Maybe he thought I was going to start moving this pawn. And if he takes, I push. I don't know what he was thinking. Rook to e3. And that temporarily brings his queen off the king side. Again, the computer calls for going g3, knight to g6, c3. B takes, rook takes. That would have been a little more comfortable for me, frankly. My c4 pawn's a little tough to defend, but I should be okay. After rook to e3, he went f5. He's going after the base of my pawn chain, which is the way to go. I went c3. Now, right now, before c3, it's almost even a tiny, tiny advantage for black. It calls for rook to h3, which the funny part was that's exactly why I moved the rook there. I had plans to do that. And I know if you have a plan and you don't do it because it's the wrong thing to do, but I thought that was a really good plan. And for some reason, I went c3, and I have no idea why. And that brought me down almost two points in score. So now I'm in trouble. But we lost, Grandpa. So you lost. The ball didn't work. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. Uh-oh. You got any money? Uh-uh. What's this? Wow. And this? You're a walking piggy bank. Wow. There you go. What about you, Grandpa? I'll have a sip of yours. That's an awful big sip, Grandpa. I'm an awful big guy. Now let's see some of that fancy footwork. Oh well, so let's continue on. He played F takes E4. I played rook takes. I kind of went back and forth with that. I wanted to keep the queen there for a couple of reasons. One was the obvious one, in case the queen had a move from here. I guarded the C4 pawn, and I still wanted her to be able to go anywhere on this this file. B takes. I thought about taking. It's funny the computer shows either rook takes c3 or rook takes b6. And later I discovered after I analyzed the game rook takes b6 was the move. Because the queen here is overloaded. It's guarding both knights. If rook takes the knight on b6, the queen has to take back, and this rook takes this knight. I would have gotten both his knights for my rook. That would have been a good score. What I did instead was I looked at this for a while, and I thought to myself, let's give it a shot. Let's go for it. And I went bishop takes h6. Now we all see that if pawn takes... Queen goes here, check. And he loses this knight. So he can't take. He played knight to f5, which was the correct move. He had to give up that h pawn. Interesting, it shows after g takes h6, queen to g3, king to h7, rook takes, and he's pretty much doomed. His king's in a really bad spot. 
and I went back bishop to f3, or excuse me, e3. I'm thinking to myself, if he does take this bishop, I probably should have moved the bishop here. But if he does take the bishop, I got a world of hurting coming on him. He doesn't have much for defense, and I've got a rook and a queen right there. And I got these pawns that can come marching down. Once this knight moves, this rook comes right into play. Right now, believe it or not, I thought I was actually winning at this point. It shows 0.00, .00 on the score. Now, what he does is a double question mark move, and I question it myself. He goes queen to c7. Maybe he's thinking about guarding this g-pawn with a queen. I really don't know. But he probably should have done, instead of queen to c7, was knight to a4. And when knight to g3, knight to d4 would have gave me a lot more grief. After queen to c7, the score jumps from 0 to 1.5 pawn advantage. I move knight to g3, knight takes, f takes. I'm feeling pretty good at this point. Soon this pawn is going to drop. My bishop's going to be coming in. I've got a rook. My queen can get in here. And then this rook can come over. I got a lot of forces coming on his king side pretty quick here. And his knight is way out of play. And this rook is out of play as well. So I'm feeling pretty good at this point. He probably should have went knight to d7. He should have probably brought his knight in. Bring his knight up here to help defend. Sorry for all my arrows. They got a little carried away. But what he did was he went knight to a4. And that basically sealed his doom. That's about a two and almost a two and a half point advantage for me now. I mean, it's coming up. What he should have done instead is after knight to e7, I went rook to h4 and then knight to f6. Bring over something to help the king. After knight to a4, I even figured out the correct move. Rook over. Now I'm threatening queen to h7 check. He went rook to f6. And the score jumped from almost 3 points, 2.9 for me, to over 9 and a half, almost 10 immediately. He could have maybe went g5 instead was the computer's choice, but after b takes rook to a7, at least he's got some protection from the rook and the, and the queen here. This knight, of course, is completely out of play. He might as well be a piece down at this point. After rook to f6, I checked him first. King f7 and then bishop to g5. Now he could have played rook to g6. was his only place for his rook. But I probably would have moved my rook to here, which is really interesting. Because if rook takes, bishop takes, this pawn can't move because it's blocked. He's in a lot of trouble. I mean, the game is basically over at this point. He goes rook to f5. Of course, I take with check. He goes king to g8. I checked him. And now the game is basically over. Queen to f7. Rook to h8. King takes. Queen takes c2. He's trying to do something, but he can't, because this bishop is guarding the queening square. My bishop that I had hemmed in for so long is doing a great job now. I go rook to b7, threatening mate. He goes rook to g8. It's funny how the computer says if he queened, bishop takes, knight to c3, queen takes mate, and it says doesn't get the cat out of the tree. That's cute. And I went queen h5 mate. Now, granted, that wasn't Grandmaster Chess. We're both about 1,600 players, just a little bit below. But we're doing our best. We're trying. And hopefully we'll learn from our mistakes. I remember this was the first annual championship, so I was pretty nervous how things were going to turn out for turnout as well, quality of players, and, and how everybody got along. And it worked out beautifully. I had room for 24 people, and I had to turn some people away. And there were even a couple of reserve players. 
uh, when people had to leave early when they went from out of town they played so it worked out really well I was really excited a lot of people gave me uh, when I gave out the awards I got f I believe I got first place in my reserve section reserve section is 1700 and under I'm not really sure first or second I don't recall it was a couple of years ago and I got a round of applause from all the people that were here because guys that really love chess and there was no place to play any decent competition in this area and I'm glad I brought it back one of the participants called it a chess desert well it's not anymore and I love to play and I love doing these videos and I want you folks to remember if you think chess is just a game you're not playing it right and I hope to see all of you in the next video and please comment and please subscribe take care folks bye bye